You're listening to a podcast from Glenstall Abbey. Here we go again, back into lockdown. Ireland is now in a six-week lockdown to try to stem the rising tide of coronavirus infections. In the days since the announcement of these new restrictions, I was asking myself, what lessons did I learn from the last lockdown that might sustain me through this one? What would I do differently this time around? Should I have made more of the somewhat eased restrictions in recent months, now that we can't travel far, or do simple things like meet friends for coffee? The perceived wisdom is that monks ought to be the most prepared for a lockdown. Isn't our daily life a sort of lockdown? In some ways, yes. Certainly, our experience, or at least my experience, of this past spring was much easier and more normal than most. Thank God, none of the monks here became sick. We found normality in our usual daily round of prayer, work, study and community, despite what was going on in the outside world. We took on various roles around the monastery here at Glenstall. We lingered longer with one another at morning coffee, and we enjoyed the glorious weather in our grounds. Of course, there were challenges. A monastery is never without guests, St. Benedict reminds us, but we were without guests for months. We celebrated Holy Week and Easter without the usual buzz of the annual retreat and a packed church. Finances looked precarious, and we sadly had to say farewell to some dear colleagues of ours. So, there were challenges, but we certainly had it better here at Glenstall Abbey than a lot of people did elsewhere. How did the lockdown go for me then? Well, there were online classes to be attended to, and Father Dennis and I stayed in touch with students from our boarding school to provide a sort of virtual chaplaincy. We both relished the time for photography and video making. I wrote essays and I finished my philosophy studies. I continued my studies in French and Arabic. And of course, I was a monk, praying here, working here, living here with the brethren. But it wasn't all rosy. There was a sort of existential dread, a feeling that there was something out there that could make some of us sick, some of us very sick, and possibly even end our lives. There was a feeling of curbed liberty, although that was mostly fantasy, because I was hardly going out and about all the time every day before the COVID-19 lockdown struck. The best laid plans for the coming year were put in doubt. There was also the sadness of my grandmother's passing in England. Not being able to visit her during her final illness, to be near my family. This was hard. But I was so grateful to be able to attend a funeral. But even then, Covid was ever-present. The things we need in times of sorrow, to embrace one another, to be physically close with our loved ones, these things weren't possible. Lockdown was at times mentally challenging, an uncertain time for me, even with the routine and rhythm of the monastery, which gives solace and stability to monks. Nevertheless, I was fortunate. I hadn't become sick, I hadn't lost a loved one to the virus, or witnessed the crumbling of a business, or the ending of my employment. So, taking all this into account then, what was my lesson from lockdown? It's a lesson that at times I think I've understood and learned, but at other times realise I'm still learning. It's a lesson about trusting in God, despite the troubles of our life. Teaching his followers on the mountain beside the Sea of Galilee, Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food? and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, 
even Solomon in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Having made it through the last lockdown, a unique event in our lifetimes, we're somewhat prepared for what we're about to experience. Nevertheless, it will be a time of worry for many of us. Insofar as we can, perhaps we can remember these words of Jesus and take some comfort. Every relationship is built on trust, and our relationship with God needs it most. So let's take each day as it comes, with trust in God's plan and care for us, and don't worry about tomorrow, because today has enough trouble of its own. <laughs>